What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the webinar. I see that. I Look at that. We already got some comments. I love it. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. We got a great show today. My good friend, Jacob McLaughlin, is on the show. We're going to bring him on in a second. But as always, maybe you're new to this broadcast. Maybe you're new to my show. Many of you have been watching this for a long time, so you don't need to guess what's coming next, which is I want you to comment what city you're joining in from. Comment what city you're joining in from. Look at that ball. <laughs> Man, that viewer count just blown up. Let's bring some people on. So we got uh, Justin, Justin Ariana from Ormond Beach. We got Kevin Wu from Nashville. Leslie with the dancing emoji. Hey, I'm down with that. Uh, Leslie Garcia from Rent Man. My favorite place in California. You can't come up with a better name than this than Rancho Cucamonga, California. Uh, we got Kelly Creed Farmer from Charlotte, North Carolina. Eric Sains from the Windy City. Ryan Albino from Charlotte, North Carolina. Brittany S. from Tampa, Florida. We got a LinkedIn user from Nagarazent, Rhode Island. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Come on, guys. Um, David Kegg from Houston, Texas. Anthony Alvarez from Louisiana. We got Jayla Turner from Chicago. Zachary Kephart from Greenville, South Carolina. Matthew and Eddie from Mobile, Alabama. We got too many people on the stream, but I'm going to keep going. We got another LinkedIn user from Wilmington, North Carolina. For the people who are coming up blank, go to your privacy settings and turn it to public. You're screwing yourself doing that. Carl Norris from Denver, Colorado. Robert Baston from Monterey, California. Aaron Castile from Oakland, California. Oaktown in the house. Aaron Coffey from Muncie, Indiana. We got Nicholas Morales from San Antonio, Texas. We're going to read a few more of these and then we're going to bring Jacob on. Walter Krause from Oxford, Ohio. Another LinkedIn user from Omaha, Nebraska. Tyra Hunter from Flint, Michigan. Kendra Jonas from San Antonio, Texas. Morgan Baxter from Rhode Island. We got Zach Stryker from Fort Worth. Zach, do you work for Stryker? That'd be amazing. Kevin Ramirez from Los Angeles, California. And by the way, while your guys are commenting, do us a favor to reach more people. If you're enjoying the stream, I want to see that emoji button being slammed. Slam the living hell out of the emoji. So while you're watching this on desktop, go ahead and open on your phone or on the desktop. I just want you to just keep hitting that emoji button. All right. We gotta we we, we gotta do some work here, right? Jacob and I are gonna be entertaining the living hell out of you guys. The least you can do is hit that emoji button, help us out here. Okay. So let me bring on my good my good friend, my guest. Jacob McLaughlin. Jacob, what's up, man? Welcome. Omar, what's up, dude? I love the energy already. It's about to, we're about to have a good one. And I just got to give a shout out. A lot of those people, uh, Zach, Stryker, not with Stryker yet. Um, but a lot of those guys from the course, just want to say everyone from the course, hello. Um, good to see the support. Love that you guys are all here. Um, and it's, it's about to be a good one. I can't wait to chop it up and give all the knowledge out to everybody. So it's going to be a great show with you. Oh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun, man. And you know, just for uh, just for context, um, what uh, just for everybody to understand, um, I went ahead and so first of all, um, I don't have anything to sell you, right? Anybody who is not in Jacob's program, I'm gonna encourage you to go into it. I do not get an affiliate fee for that. I don't get anything. The reason why is that Jacob is actually in my program. Um, he's also somebody that I coach. I really respect him a lot, and I, I appreciate the things that he does for the industry. Um, and more importantly, he's brought on a lot of people, uh, into the industry, given them a great pathway. I, I, I like his course. I like what he teaches. And so my, my part in doing this is that I wanted to bring Jacob on for us to talk and help people not only break into the industry, but many of you are already in the industry. I'm going to give you some tips on what to do. Right. But my goal here is for all the people who are going through Jacob's program, who are considering it, once you get into the industry, then come to me and spend some money. <laughs> but but all, all kidding aside, what we're going to do is this, is that LinkedIn is an extremely powerful platform. I'm going to walk you guys through a special presentation that's kind of private within my course. I've taken from different parts of my modules, and we're going to walk you through the three most important things that you got to do with your LinkedIn. And then we're going to get to, in my opinion, the best part, which is going to do live Q&A with me and Jacob. You can ask us anything. And of course, Jacob... You know, as I go through the the presentation, I you know this is going to be like you know Sunday Sunday night football. So we'll have some color commentary from you, okay? Oh, of course, man. It's it's going to be great. And the one thing I always just want to want you guys to all know too is everyone who's just watching this because 
like you said, they don't want to sell you anything. We always talk about, we only accept five people. So it's not like we are trying to sell it to everybody out there anyway. But the reason is I want you guys to know is, you know, for the last two and a half years, put out over 150 uh, podcasts for free. There's YouTube uh-huh. videos for free. Right? It's not like we're here just trying to be like, oh, look what all we can get. It's because we put out so much free stuff. We're just here to help people, right? When people really need the help and we they want to get fast results, that's all we do. But like, I say exactly. this all the time. It's why I, I'm working with Omar. Oh, our, all that Omar does for me is, A, he's a great friend and a mentor, but he's just saving me a lot of time and a lot of money. And yeah. that's all we do. But again, we're never here. Don't take a cent from us. We don't want a cent. All the free episodes, all the LinkedIn stuff for free. There's YouTube, a lot of free stuff. I'll tell you. And Jacob, you know, there's there's people who come to me. I, I get the, the most common question I get. So like uh, for, for those who follow me, I also have an Instagram channel called All Hail Medical Sales. I get most common questions like, how do I get in everything? The first thing I do, I'm like, look, go follow Jacob McLaughlin. Go check out new to medical device sales. Just go through the podcast. Apply what you learned there. If you're still struggling after a few months, I would then consider spending some money and going through this program, right? Yep. Um, so that being said, how about we read off a few more people because some more people joined. So let's do, here we go. Michael Urba, Ur. Urbazeski, Urbazuski. I hope I didn't mess that up, man. From Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Uh, we got Wilson Too Tall. That's that's a sales name right there. Wilson Too Tall. That's a sales name. We're from Rhode Island. We got Maddie Bustle. I love that name. Maddie. Maddie's a fun name. From Maddie, Birmingham, good to see Alabama. you again. <laughs> uh, Andrew J. Wright from Central Florida. Robert Madison. <laughs> we have new, I, I didn't realize that's a good uh, N- NTMDS. I didn't know that's new to medical device sales. Yeah. So that's what we do. Yeah. We send it out. But real quick, want to give a shout out. Robert was in our course, but again, he just got hired today. Um, oh, uh, fantastic. Dude, congratulations, yeah, Robert. So Hit big, the emoji button for that one, guys. Yeah, All right. Wanted, that's why I wanted to shout him out because we were just on a call this morning, just got an uh, associate sales rep role. So congratulations, Robert. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. We love it. We love it. All right. So with that being said, uh, let's jump into it. So I'm going to share my screen here. All right. And bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Uh, here we go. All right, Jacob, uh, let me know. Can you see the screen? I can see it. All right. And let me get rid of, uh, that thing, that banner. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, and then Jacob, uh, do, you, do you see a little uh, spotlight? A little spotlight. Yeah, do you see my pointer? Yeah, yeah, I can see your crease. Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so let's jump in. So real quick, just quick background on me. Proud husband and father, first generation American. I'm a former med student. I went to medical school in Texas, but I dropped out. I tell people I was the smartest guy in my class. Started off at Missouri Robotics, which is the first robotic spine company. I carried the bag and I did sales. First head of growth marketing industry, and I spent the last decade in healthcare capital equipment and SaaS. So robotics, AI, fintech, just really expensive stuff. This is why you should listen to me. My company, Katib & Co., has one mission, which is helping med tech companies grow their sales and drive technology adoption using social media. And if you didn't know it, we have the number one podcast in med tech it's called The State of Med Tech. Go check it out. Give it a review. And if you haven't already... Check out new to medical device sales. So if you look in the medical device sales side, Jacob has the number one podcast based on reviews and downloads. You know, he's just been crushing it for, for a long time. And he has a, I didn't put it up. I'm sorry. He has a YouTube channel as well. Make sure to go check that out. And if you're a follower of Jacob, if you listen to even one episode, make sure that you give it a five-star review and write a review on Apple, especially. It really That's helps nice. a lot. Very important, you know? But yeah, like I would say, I mean, I got the number one show in med tech, but when it comes to like uh, anything that's medical device sales, Jacob, apps, his show crushes everybody. <laughs> so I appreciate that, man. No facts, man. Facts. I got to give credit where his credit's due. So why LinkedIn? Okay. That's the first question. Why LinkedIn? Now I'm going to take a second to uh, unshare my screen. And I'm going to share something with you guys. Okay. Jacob, when I tell you to go buy a book or buy any product, do you just do you go buy it immediately? What, what do you usually do? No. So first thing I will do is two things. I'll either go to Google, uh-huh. I'm search it, or Amazon. 
and I'm going to watch that. And then at third, if I need to, I'll go to Audible and do a sample lesson. Exactly. So this is the one thing I always tell people. My filter on life is persuasion and psychology. And the brain was never designed to separate this world, which is you know the digital world, and the physical world. It's all the same thing. Which also means when it comes to a business standpoint, a B2B buyer, business to business buyer, on the weekends or during the evenings when they're a consumer buying stuff from Amazon, they don't separate those buying behaviors. So just like when I want to buy something as simple as, let's say, a lint roller, I, I go to Amazon and look at it, right? So I'm going to show you guys. Uh, can you see this Amazon screen? Yep. Okay. So this is a lint roller, okay? When I wanted to buy a lint roller, there's all these choices, Okay, so let's just look at lint roller. You reuse, look at all these different choices. How, how do I pick, right? So imagine being a hiring manager and you get all these resumes, people. They're just like, how do you pick, right? Well, look at this lint roller, okay? First of all, if you want to look at, if you want to understand psychology, study Amazon's landing pages. First of all, you have a good headline here. Reusable cat and dog hair remover for furniture, couch, carpet. So this is all for uh, uh, search engine optimization, right? Then the next important thing, Ratings, 141,000, like people will just buy based on this. What if I want more details? Okay, there's photos, there's some media. All right, let me go more. There's more details here about this item. Okay, I want more. Like what do I, okay, there's more photos. Then all the way down here, you have reviews. You see what people writ, wrote about. This is to make a $20 decision, my friends, okay? So if there's that much content to make a $20 decision, don't you think that there should be a lot of content to make a $50,000 decision, a $100,000 decision, which means hiring you, right? Or if you're already in the industry, you know, you have budget to hire, let's say, a new marketing manager or a new head of sales. That's a that's $150,000, $200,000 decision. You need, you need that kind of content, right? Jacob, please jump in. Well, I just want to say at the beginning, so for I can tell you from working with hiring managers, working with CEOs, talking to them. On average, when they are doing a, an initial hire, even at an associate sales rep level, they're doing about a $250,000 investment from the fact of they're going to hire you. They got to pay for your salary, but then they're going to pay for your training. They're going to pay for your onboarding. They're going to pay for probably six months of you losing the company money because you're just getting onboarded and trying to get caught up to speed. So to Omar's point, you're right. When they're making these decisions, that's why I tell everybody in our course, it's not just a, hey, your salary is $70,000. They're doing that. It's they're spending a quarter of a million dollars or more on this person. That's why these interviews are so intense and why they're trying to make sure they're getting the right person that isn't going to come in and a month or two later get yelled at and leave. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, uh, someone asked, is this going to be recorded? Yes, this will, this is being recorded. It's going to be here on LinkedIn. You can also find it on my YouTube, on the YouTube channel for state of med tech. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's go back to my presentation. Okay. Uh, Jacob, let me know when you can see the screen. Yep, I can see it. All right, thanks, buddy. All right, let's roll through this real quick so we can get to the fireside. Okay, so sit back. This is this is not a surface level uh, presentation, especially for Jacob's audience. I wanted to make sure that we that I really pulled out all the stops here. All right, so this is the head of who started like LinkedIn Healthcare, and she told me LinkedIn is the intersection of industry trends and career decisions. LinkedIn, for those of you who did not know, is owned by Microsoft. Microsoft spent $26 billion on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's not going anywhere. Okay, It's going to be here for a long, long time. As of today, there's it's actually more than this. There's 950 million members, 200 million in the United States. For context, Instagram has 1.2 billion, right? So LinkedIn is, is, a, is a major social platform, okay? Now, here's the most important thing. In 2021, when you looked at trust, Right, you had all these different social media platforms. LinkedIn was the number one when it came to security, legitimacy, community, at, you know, ad relevance, not so much an ad experience, right? They outrank Pinterest, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Why is that important? Because when you have high trust and authority, guess who ranks that really high? Google. Okay. And so, like if you search my name on LinkedIn or not on LinkedIn, on Google. I have almost a million hits on my name. The first thing that comes up is my LinkedIn page. Okay. Same with doctors, right? That's why I, I teach people how to sell using LinkedIn. So if you search a doctor's name, a lot of times they'll have their faculty pages and then LinkedIn is right there. This guy doesn't even have that. You know, he wasn't very active on LinkedIn even back when I, when I checked and his LinkedIn page ranks very, very high. Okay. 
Here's what you don't want, whether you're a surgeon or a rep or anybody, to come here and see that there's no photo, no banner, no nothing, okay? Now, even though this person is the chair of cardiothoracic surgery, they're going to have to change because even hospitals are like, hey, we have to do better about marketing our, our company yep. because we have to recruit residents, we have to recruit fellows, et cetera, right? Yep. So this is a game that everybody's playing now. Uh, Jacob, do you have something to say? Well, I was just going to say, you just have to understand like why Omar's saying that, even with like the residents and everybody, it's always a business. There it's always, always a people. business. There's always, you have to always understand that. That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. So here's just something for those who are trying to get in medical sales. And let's say, you know, this is why you should continue using LinkedIn. Here is uh, orthopedic surgeons. In April of 2022, there are 2,000 orthopedic surgeons who posted on LinkedIn. There's about 50,000 in the United States, but in the U.S., 2,000 created content. One month later, 2,500 more or 2,500 uh, 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 made content, right? So it's like 25% you know, month over month. If we look at, let's say, OR directors, look, 89,000 OR directors on LinkedIn, okay? And 14,000 of them posted content, original content. Okay. So your customers are here. So use this to not only get into the industry to grow your career, you got to you learn how to use this to sell because guess what everybody else is doing, showing up to the hospital, like a schmuck and trying to force their way in. Those days are gone. My friends, Yep. It's like you can't sell that way anymore. Okay. Now, one thing I want you to think about is your profile funnel. This is the way people decide whether to accept or ignore your crest. They're going to look at your photo and headline. Then they're going to get to your about section. Maybe they're featured and then either they're going to ignore or accept. Most of the time, it's going to be right here, right? It's going to be a split decision. So the three most important things for your profile are this, your photo, your, your photo and banner, your headline, and your name in that order, okay? And this is really important here because this is pretty much what people are seeing when you comment on things, when you send a, uh, a request is your name this headline, and this photo. Let me cover the name real quick. So with the name, you can't really do much with your name, right? Except that you should know that your name can be persuasive. So for example, a few years ago, the CEO of Medtronic was Omar Ishrak. So when he was the CEO, I went and connected with every major decision maker, VP, et cetera, at, at, at Medtronic, because I had the same name as their CEO. That's one way to be persuasive. Uh, whoever, John Stryker or Dan Stryker, the guy who, with the last name Stryker early on, I would connect with everybody at Stryker. You, you will easily get them to accept your friend, friend request just because of the last name, okay? Now, your photo and your headline are very important, so I want to cover that. First of all, let's, let's talk about the photo because there's so much that goes into a photo. This is an iPhone photo, by the way, so you don't have to do much, but for you to get hired, there's specific things I want to cover about what makes a good photo, okay? First of all, do you smile or not smile? You want to look approachable but also take be taken seriously, so... Like, what exactly do you? These are all clini uh, clinical studies. You can find the reference for them here. There was a study that was done on persuasion that smiling images ranked high for both dominance and affiliation. So you want to have a good smile because if you're neutral, if you look angry, like <laughs> you lose persuasion power. You want to be right here, okay? What exactly is a good smile? Small smile and have kind of surprised eye eyebrows, which means just kind of like slightly smile, raise your eyebrows up, okay? That's a good smile, okay? Now, guys, and I don't care to be politically correct here, men can't smile big. If you're a woman, you can smile very, very big. You'll look persuasive. You'll look uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, approachable. You're not going to look creepy. If you're a man, do not smile too much because you'll come off as creepy and like you're up to no good. So you have to be careful with that smile, okay? Now, let me, uh, let me stop sharing there. And come back for one one second, okay? And finally, I want to go just to LinkedIn real quick. I'm going to go to my to my profile page real quick, and I'm going to bring up Jacobs as well, okay? And actually, Jacob, if you could you talk a little bit because the last part I want to cover is the headline, right? Yeah. Importance of the headline. So let me um, let me go and present screen real quick. All right, here we go. So with your headline, remember these first three words or a few words are going to be the things that people know you for, yep. right? So I always tell people focus on leading with who you help and how you help them, right? 
Jacob also has a good one, right? Partnering with OBGYNs. If you're trying to get into the industry, and this is where I want to, I want Jacob to come up to, to take over. You have to put something in there that's going to be compelling. Like for example, um, former nurse breaking into med tech or, you know, former whatever, right? Something like that. And the last thing I do want to mention is have some banner here. Don't let this be great. Remember, this is like a Amazon uh, landing page. You want something here, even if it's just something as simple as like a picture of doctors or something or something techie, you can put something there. So Jacob, let me, um, let me come back to you. If you can kind of share your thoughts just on the, on the headline. Yeah. So with the headline, when we're working with our course um and working with our people is number one like you said is the, the photo is going to be number one like just making sure that you don't have a creeper photo but in that headline i always have the conversation with our students of why would somebody choose you right why are you different than everybody else that's going to be connecting to them right are you like for example we have if you have a former athlete if you're a former division one athlete we all know that medical device sales companies love athletes right they love people that are competitive they love people that are putting it out there that are hardworking. And so for us is how can you do it, differentiate yourself inside of when you are putting that banner together? So for example, if we have a clinical background, I'm telling them to put the clinical background information in there. If they have, if they were an athlete, you better believe that we're putting something about being an athlete. Like I can tell you right now, uh, one of our girls, she's just texting me. She played uh, softball at Florida state and then Mississippi state. And now just by her profile, she actually in the last seven days has had two regional managers from top companies reach out to her asking her for interviews. She hasn't even done that networking just by, again, her profile being active on LinkedIn and by what she's put in that header. So like you're saying, what are you doing to be able to separate yourself compared to everybody just has their name? And then as you can put is hard, hardworking, driven individual right? Or looking, I see this one all the time and I, and I understand why people do it, but it's looking to break into medical device sales, right? This is, it's the same thing with how I feel about, and again, would love to hear your thoughts, Omar, but like when I see the open to work, I just want to like grab these people and shake it because it's like, it, it almost to me looks like here's me waving the white flag. I need all the help. Please like give me help compared to when I've had those talks with people putting the open to work, I'm like, hey, how about you just go do the work? Yeah. How about you just go actually make it and people will figure it out because you're networking them and letting them know because you're getting on the phone instead of, I see it all the time. I actually had one of our girls that I personally know. She, she actually called me. She's like, hey, thought about putting open to work and actually putting the little sob story because I got laid off and all that stuff. And I'm like, you're in sales. You're in medical. Do you see, think anybody's going to see that and be like, I want that killer on my team? No, because you're not being a killer. You're being exactly. like, oh my gosh, right? And so it's the same thing when like, hey, I'm looking to break into medical device. Like, it's what I say in my course all the time. When you're connecting with somebody, we already know why you're connecting with us. I already know every single human being that's not in the industry that's reaching out to connect with me is wanting to get in the industry. They're reaching out to slide into my DMs to say, I want to pick your brain or that I want to, uh, hey, I have a job. Do you know of any, right? Like I'm looking for a job. So again, in that headline, what are you, what's different that you bring to the table instead of just saying, I'm looking for a job in medical device sales. Great. We all know that, but exactly what's your background going to do that. And real quick, I just want to touch on this Omar, since we're on it, I always bring it back to, especially working with the younger generation. They look at LinkedIn, like this foreign object and they're like, I can't figure it out. But then you bring up Instagram or TikTok, and they're like, I get it. Right. And so the only conversation I want to just say that real quick is I just had this conversation in our course call. We do office hours every week. We just talked about this last yesterday was think about when you guys don't have a good banner, you don't have a good headline and you don't have a good, a picture or a creepy picture. It's the equivalent of somebody who has no profile picture has two followers and they sent you a message or a, a friend request on Instagram. Are you going to respond to them? No, because you're like, oh, they're probably fake. I'm not going to waste my time, right? It's no different than LinkedIn, right? Compared to if somebody has a good picture, they actually, maybe you can see their profile. It actually seems somewhat normal. No different. You just need to bring it over to this side of the LinkedIn version mm -hmm. compared to Instagram. I, yeah, I completely agree. And again, like just to kind of, and by the way, now we're kind of opening up to the, uh, to the fireside Q and A. So drop your questions in. One of the things I actually don't mind doing is that if somebody wants to go, Jacob and I will do a profile rip right now. So if you want us to review your profile, like we'll, we'll lay into it and we'll review it right now. So <laughs> whoever wants to be brave enough and, and, and volunteer, 
right? But the one thing I would say is like, think of it like this. There's a reason why they say when you're looking for a job, the best time to do that is when you're employed is because yes, nobody wants neediness. Like selling business, it's just like dating. It's, it's all, you know, like nobody wants somebody who's needy. Like, I mean, look, think of a really attractive person and then imagine them being like really needy for a date. Like when I was when I was a single guy, I remember like very distinctly. This is a long time ago. There was a really attractive girl I met like at a at a networking event, and then like just talking to her and exchanging. Like she came off really needy. Yep. Like she was like way too into me, and I was like, nah. <laughs> Well, you I know? gotta touch on that real quick because we talk about this in the course all the time. And, and we one, got and by the way, we got uh uh Ken Kendra Jonas. So I'm yeah. gonna bring up let me let me Kendra find Kendra Jonas. She's she's part of the part of the crew. So we'll we'll have fun with this one. But while you're doing that, what I always just talk about in the course is number one, this is what we help with is teaching people how to get multiple job offers. Um, because again, when you're just again, most people that are watching this that are in the industry, you guys are just like, I'm just trying to get a job. I just I just need anything. And people can feel that, right? Because they're yeah. just trying to get the first job instead of what we're teaching in our course is no, I don't need this. I want this job. I don't need this job. Guess what? Cause I have other options and I know the value that I'm bringing to an organization. That's a whole different talk because right now I just had one of our girls. I just got off the call with, she's now going in the interview process with three companies. Well, guess what? That's a big conversation when we have that, because I don't need that. I can now leverage that. Now you can see how we make more money. We get in faster, all that good stuff. But it's always just being able to bring in, yeah, you don't want to be needy. And that's what a lot of people come off is, hey, I'm just looking for this. Hey, I need this. And number two, to your point, is I say this all the time, especially to my nurses that are when I'm talking with them in our side or inside our course is when you always have to be look like you're running towards something and not away from something. So when you're leaving like nursing and you're going into a career like medical device sales, it's very similar for the you've had the clinical aspect, but so many people are leaving nursing because of certain reasons that are very common. Everybody knows them. And so when that does happen, I always have to make sure, Hey, make sure when you're talking to these organizations, you're excited and you want to go be a part of this team and you want to go be in medical device sales because of A, B, and C, not you're leaving nursing or leaving your job because this A, B, and C sucks. Right. Because mm -hmm. then now when you're talking to those companies, those companies are like, well, they're just coming to us because we're the next best option. Right. Just think about going, bringing it back to dating right? Do you want to be with somebody who's actually pursuing you and you're pursuing them? And it's actually a good, like, it's a good hunt. Or is it somebody that they're like, oh, I actually tried to date this person, but it didn't work out. So I guess I'll settle for you. Right. Exactly. So I just exactly. always want to throw that out there. Um, so before we, I, I brought up a bunch, so a bunch of people who said, uh, I'll do it. So I'm going to bring up, who am I bringing up? I'm bringing up uh, Kendra, Walter, Tuyo, Carl, Ian, Keese. Uh, but there's a couple of uh, uh, oh, and Morgan, Morgan Baxter. Morgan, connect with everybody at Baxter. <laughs> I, like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not joking about that. No, like, it's a thousand uh, percent real. Yeah, uh, Morgan Baxter. And... What you have to do it too is like right. I just was at the gym yesterday. And the guy comes in and he asked if he can use the machine with me. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what's your name, man? And I was like, oh, it's Jacob. And he's like, my name's Jacob. And I'm like, yeah, it, great name, uh, right? And now it's like, well, I'll never forget you, right? So it's just to Omar's, Omar, Omar's point, if I can talk, I've had too much coffee, is that's, it's that simple to be able to make a connection and make where they're going to remember you, right? Exactly. And I'm going to, uh, before we do that though, real quick, uh, quick question. So, um, so Brittany has this question. She says, how long should your headline be? So your headline, it can be as long as you want. And actually let me, I'll share my screen and jump to my profile just super quick, just to, just to, uh, just to show you, um, what's hold on. Let me, let me just jump to my profile real quick. And then, and then, uh, we got some good, good profiles, uh, Christian Wall, Tyra Hunter. Okay, hold on. Let me just let me bring up a few few more. Okay, <laughs> this is, we're gonna we're gonna just rip gonna through this. We're gonna fly through it too, so we can get some Q and A's for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh man, we got some good ones. And look, I, I'm just going to tell. Uh, hold on, let me pull up. Okay, Christian Wall. Okay, I'm just gonna forewarn you guys. Okay. Uh, 
Christian Walsh. Okay, I think I found him. Uh, hold on. I think. Just remember, this is all out of love. It's all out of love. We only we beat you because we love you. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's that's the one thing we always talk about, and that's why I appreciate Omar. And if you guys haven't listened to me, you, that's why everyone in our course knows it. We are very direct, and some people won't like that. And now I'm just going to tell direct. you, we have to be direct because two things. Everybody asks, how do we get people like at my program hired in under 10 weeks when if they don't take it, we're at, the average we see is probably between 12 and 24 months. It's because we cut out the crap. I don't care if it hurts your feeling. It's what you need to hear where we're going to go because now we can move forward and get faster. The only reason I'm saying that is welcome to medical device sales. You can't be passive. You can't be like, oh, this might hurt a feeling because otherwise you're not going to get deals done. Otherwise, you're going to be too worried about what a, a charge nurse might say or a surgeon or you know, an office manager might say, and you might not get to be able to push through. Sometimes there are times there I've been in the OR when you're the rep and they're, it's, they're using your device. It is your responsibility to take charge. And yeah. If they're not doing things. And I, the reason I'm saying that is that can be kind of to some people that can be scary to go talk to a surgeon and be like, surgeon, no, you need to listen to me because they're, if you guys hey. have never been in it, it can get heated in an OR room. Um, uh, real quick. Uh, Christian Christian Walsh, I can't. Find, it's hard to find yours because there's a, so many of them. So can you tell me what city you're in? And by the way, uh, let's get started because there's already somebody who is it. Jonathan Sanders, like slaughter mine. You asked for it, buddy. I'm gonna slaughter the hell out of yours right now, dude. Um, Jonathan is uh, into. He just got in, so we're. It's gonna be fun. Jonathan, he's actually uh, top of the manager today, so that's gonna go well. Okay, so. All right. So first of all, um, oh, let me see. Do Christian Walsh. Uh, so the person who said, guys, feel free to check out my profile. I'm the only one with this name. I, I don't know what your name is because right now on my side, uh, it says LinkedIn user. So your, your, your profile is on private, I guess. So I, on this platform, I can't see. So whoever just said, guys, feel free to use mine, type in your name and I'll look you up. Um, okay, so real quick, let me let me answer the headline thing. A headline can be as long as you want. The most important part, though, is the first sentence because that's what people will see when you comment and post. But when someone clicks into your profile, there's all kinds of things I put in my profile towards the end that just optimize for search. Okay, C Christians and Boston. Math okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring Christian and one other person, and we're and then we're rolling, man. Uh, Christian. Walsh, Jacob, talk about something while I'm pulling the stop. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just having fun. I was looking at actually the webinar on my phone, so I can just see a little bit of the outside uh, interaction of all what's going on. But um, no, the thing I just love just seeing everybody on here today. That's why I'm keen to see who we actually are, how many people we had on here. Is the fact that you guys are hungry to get better, that you're continuing to go. Um, because again, the thing I talk about all the time is. Everyone tells me if, if you guys haven't heard any of my stories, like you can go back and check out the podcast over the last three years. I've been on well over 10,000 phone calls with people and it's, everybody tells me they're going to break into medical device sales. Everybody tells me they're going to do the work. Everybody tells me they're going to be a president club winner. and They're going to come in and beat me and, Oh, I'm so encouraging. And Oh, they get so much motivation for me, but wait to watch them in six months. They're going to be above me. Great. I can tell you less than 1% of the 1% actually reach out and actually break into this industry because talk is cheap. Um, and that's the biggest yeah. thing I can always say is coming to this and being open to it. I can just sit here and tell you everyone has who is in my course, but it also has listened to my podcast. If you guys don't know, five years ago, I had $1,200 to my name, moved out here, didn't know one person in Arizona to be where I'm at now. And it's only because one thing, I've always been mm -hmm. open to giving feedback. I'm just always asking people smarter and better than me. Just, hey, can you be advised? And then I, and then I do something that's crazy, but I act, listen, take that advice. Instead of being like, no, that person, because I can just sit here and tell you if that person's way ahead of you, yeah, you might think you're better than them, but they probably know something you don't know. And so that's what I would just always encourage you guys. And that's why I love seeing everybody on who's on right now, because you guys are open to it. Now, the biggest thing is we can tell you everything. I say this all the time. The information is not the problem because I have 150 episodes for free telling you that information. It's how are you utilizing the information and actually doing it? So from what mm -hmm. we're about to tell you right now with Omar, that's great. We're going to tell you. But as if you guys don't change it or do anything, it's not going to help. So 
that's what I do always want to make sure that you guys are taking that action. Absolutely. And now it's, it's, it's come time to just rip up these things apart. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, not mine, obviously. Okay. So what I was going to say, <laughs> perfect. This, this can be, this, see, this is, this is the main thing when everybody's on, on here, they know that I help med techs reps grow pipeline remotely using social media. So when somebody's thinking about, Hey, our sales suck, um, we, we should be more innovative. Maybe we should use social. My name comes to mind. But then afterwards, I, I put these things which highlight when you come on here who I am, proud husband and father, avid reader, jujitsu. Think about that. Before you even meet me, you have an idea about me. Proud of husband and father, that's values. Avid reader, smart, jujitsu, like tough, fit, right? You know, all these things. And I used to have like medical device sales, et cetera, but I'm not trying to get hired anymore. So I own my own company, so I don't have those things. Now, let's rip these apart. Jonathan Sanders, you're up first. Um, can I take the first shot, Jacob? I'm going to take well, the first shot. I, I know Jonathan. Shot. So yeah, you go for it. We've okay. had our goals. So let's, let's talk about what's good here. Um, I, I love passionate healthcare leaders striving to make a difference in medical device sales, humble father. That's good. My only thing is like, if you're going to capitalize these letters, right, kind of stay consistent. Um, photo's not good, man. It's, it's kind of like dark and pixelated and everything. The biggest thing is get rid of this, man. This this is like terrible. And and the reason why is that having a BS is not look, if you're the first person in your family to go to college, I commend you. That's extremely hard to do. You should be proud of that. That being said, having a bachelor's degree is not something unique these days. And the other thing is the last thing you want after your name is the words BS. Okay. Get get rid of this. Okay. I don't, I don't. I've been in academia before. I have no idea what ATC is athletic. or PES. So athletic training. Okay. Yep. Jacob, does, does having an ATC certification or degree help you get into medical sales? Nope. Yeah. Bingo. Get rid of it. All so, right. Real quick. I just want to comment on that too. Yeah. To comment, every, comment. Ev to everybody that's on here right now. I say this all the time. Your background is great. And, and so many people will try to push this background. And I say this all the time. Screw your background. Get rid of your background because from what Omar's saying right now is being able to just see who you are and what you're presenting yourself as, that's going to have bigger impact than anything that they're reading for any accolades that they exactly. see. Exactly. All right. Christian Walsh, let's do you next. Okay. A uh, good background. Christian, great photo. It's nice and clear, except you come off like kind of arrogant and cocky. This is not a good look. This, this looks like it's kind of the look that someone makes after they've like insulted you, right? <laughs> or called you out. So like subconsciously, that's the feeling somebody's gonna get when they come and look at your profile. The photo is great, except you need to smile and look like, you gotta look like somebody that I wanna talk to. This just makes you, you know, does it doesn't bode well on you. And the other thing I'd say, okay, that's good that you're a district manager, it tells me nothing, right? That's all it is. It's vanilla, right? And, and, and I know you got a good, I'm sure you have, look, you, you're a, you're an NCAA division one baseball player. That should be up here, man. You yep. should be leading with that. Right. The other thing I want to tell you guys is, and actually, look, I'm going to use my account. Okay. Um, you should write a good about section. And what I would recommend doing is going to open, not open payments, but for God's sake, everybody, we have chat GPT. Go to ChatGPT, use the, the basic version, which is free, and say, pretend to be a professional LinkedIn copywriter. Take this bio about, uh, who was it? Uh, Christian Walsh. Christian Walsh. Walsh. A former NCAA one, uh, D1 baseball player and write a better, more persuasive bio, okay? Copy, paste that in, hit enter, all right? Now, you don't need to use this, but this at least gives you some ideas of what you can work with, and then have a conversation with ChatGPT and then refine this, okay? So, resilient, self-driven leader who leans into challenges. I do like that. Yep. Former college athlete, I know the... So, this is good. Expand on it. Okay, look, if you go to my profile, okay, look at, uh, here's, uh, where's my about section? Okay, I have a strong hook, which gets people to click see more. 
Then I talk about my story. I grew up in the U.S.-Mexican border. The idea of discipline, honor, hard work were ingrained in me, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's a question. People say, man, this is really long. Who reads this? The people who clicked see more. Everybody ends up reading this. And, and this should not be regurgitation of your resume. It needs to tell a story. Part of this does have my wins from my resume. So like I worked at two publicly robotic uh, traded surgical robotics companies. I want to put that here. I don't want people to go here and try and figure that out. Yep. Right. It goes back to who you are, right? Telling your exactly. story. Exactly. Because Omar is so much more than just being at those two companies. All right, J uh, Jacob, you go, you go next. All right. Yeah. So lovely, really, lovely Tyra Hunter, but as yeah, lovely so, as you are, we're going to, we're going to lay into it. <laughs> yeah. So real quick, the, the first one, Tyra is like, we talked about the open to work. Uh, first off again, we know you're open to work, but again, it's, I, I personally don't put out the open to work because now you're just telling people. And again, you, everyone's going to have their different opinion, but it's the, I need help. Who can help? I, me? I could tell just by this, by the way, it's a great photo. I could tell Tyra is extremely confident. Like I, I can just see it in the photo. Tyra, the open to work thing is so off brand. That is not you get rid of the open to work. It's a great photo though. Uh, Jacob, because, keep well, I was just gonna say, because I can tell from your photo, like Omar said, the confidence that I know you can call me right now and we would have a great conversation. You are yeah. friendly. It, everything's there. Number two, also sales professional. I see this a lot. A lot of people, what, what does that tell me? Right. And the reason I say that is the amount of people that tell me that they're in sales, but then what kind of sales, what, what's the success that you've had? Because I've had people be like, Oh, I'm a sales professional. But then they're telling me that they're selling, you know, like membership services, which I've worked at a gym. People are coming to you to buy a gym membership. Right. So there's all these different things where you're going into it. So what Omar has been talking about in that headline is what about the sales professional? Who are you? What are some of your accolades that you can bring to the table? Exactly. And by the way, most of you, like including Tyra, Tyra here, all of you had better and more extensive sales experience and backgrounds than Jacob and me when we started. Yeah. When I started, when I started in this industry, you know, of course, prior I was in medical school, which by the way, that does not, that did not help me get in at all. Right. I sold a, a collection agency software door to door as a 1099. Yep. Right. So like, and, and I had like six months experience. So you guys all have better experience. Like Tyre, look, you work at a, as a mortgage loan officer. I guarantee you, you have some stories. You got some numbers, right? Tell that story as to what you did here, right? Yep. You know, the skills part. Okay. That's fine. Put, put some details. And again, I'm going to use, I'm going to use mine, my, my uh, thing as an example here, but like, if we go back to when was I, here we go. Sales rep. Look, this is what I manage how I hit above quota, like all the things that I did, right? People remember want, want the social proof. The social, exactly. Remember, Tyra, when someone's coming here, when they when you get hired, you're somebody is hiring you to solve a problem. You are a product. So it's like, okay, I want to buy the Tyra Hunter sales product. What do I get? Okay, I don't know, right? And for those of you who don't have a lot of background, like we, we're going to come to some people who, have, who are coming out of college, your goal, right, is, oops, let me come back here. Whoops, sorry. Your, let me double check something. I want to see. Uh, is this a better? Nope, this is better. I probably just made somebody have a seizure because of that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, the other thing that I want to say is that if, if you're a college student, you don't have any experience. You need to package yourself so someone looks at your profile kind of like they did with Jacob and me when we started and say, this person has no background, no experience, but I could see who they can be for my team one year from now. I just got to train them. That's yep. what you got to aim for. And that's, right. that's a big piece. And you can keep talking. I just got to mention on this point, like all the time is because people will do that and it's so broad. It's so general, right? And then let's say they do accept you. But then what do you think I get 99% of the time from that general broad? Hey, Jacob, looking for a job. Hey, Jacob, are you open to picking your brain? Hey, Jacob, it's, it, then it's, then most people don't know how to network. And so then when you put that with a profile that's just bland and then you do the bland of everybody asking for a job or asking what they can get, now you can understand why almost no reps or managers will actually apply or reply back and actually try to get on calls with people. And so I just always want to put that. I'm not saying that's happening to you, Tyra, but like what that I do see that all the time is I get the cookie cutter. And then people are just sending me the same thing. But again, it's always coming from an ask, what can I get instead of, hey, what can I learn? And again, it's all about how are you standing out? And that's what we're teaching inside the course is like, how are you different than every single other person reaching out? Because everyone else is just asking for jobs and they have this, this is what I did, help me. 
Exactly. All right, Kendra. Kendra Jonas is next. Okay, let me uh, share my screen, choose a window. Let's see this, Kendra. I'm excited. Uh, hold on. I'm having trouble here. Let's see the changes you've made. <laughs> Kendra's uh, the go-getter, so it's going to be fun. Okay, Kendra. Hmm. Uh, oh, I know why. Give me a second there. Uh, two, 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 two. Here we go. Okay. Now we're going to share screen. Okay. Chrome tab. Share. Okay. Actually, hold on. Dang it. Kendra, sorry. You're, you're up next. I promise. Boom, boom. Everybody gets a seizure. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Kendra, um, you want me to go, Jacob? You want to go? Yeah, yeah, go for this. Sorry, I have an account from W2 actually text me, so go for it. No, no, yeah. Okay, so Kendra, so um, I love the background. The registered nurse is good. I would not put your email here. The reason why is that uh, somebody's, you know, sometimes people spam are going to get it for spam and everything. I would I would remove the email because if somebody really wants to get in touch with you, they're going to message you on LinkedIn, okay? Um, I do like this branding, but uh, – Aside from the branding, it's not clear what industry you're in. So if you're trying to get in, like I would make it a little bit more medical, right? That's that's like one thing, but you can keep this background for the most part. It's good. It looks nice. Nice photo, good smile. I like that you're off to the side and everything. Critical care nurse with five years experience. That's good. I, I, think, I think my only thing um, is how do you strengthen that? So like like what's the difference between three years experience and five years experience? Nothing, right? Three and 10, maybe. So I would get rid of the years of experience, right? And lean on critical care nurse, you know, breaking into med, med tech, right? Or something like that. You have to, you have to position where it's like, I'm a critical care nurse. I'm going to med tech, right? Um, that outside of that, Jacob, I'm going to lean out to you. Cause like I, I have different thoughts on seeking transition to clinical yeah. specialists and medical sales. A part of me says it's a good idea. Other side, side of me, I'm like, eh. But, but yeah, again, uh, yeah, Jacob, you, you, this is your area, man. You tell well, me. I was going to say, well, Kendra's in the course, so it's it's fun to see. Good job on updating the resume or updating the profile. Like Omar said, it does look good. Yeah, look at look yeah. at the details here. This is great. That's what I'm saying. So okay, Kendra's going to get hired like soon. I could tell. Like this, this is great. Yeah, and she's got the background with it. So Kendra, like, good job, like on the critical uh putting the seeking to transition to clinical specialist and medical sales. I'm okay with that because, and the reason I'm saying that is because of the background Kendra has, what we've seen with our nurses is literally by just having that nursing background and being open to that, again, not putting the open to work, but saying that you're looking at medical device sales, we've actually had recruiters reach out to our nurses um, and, and get them in, in, into interviews. So again, with Kendra putting the critical care RN, it's telling them exactly what it is and then being able to go right after it. This is where we're telling, teaching in the course, Again, she's got a strong and what you just saw is all the details she put underneath it for these people to get interested in and then combine that with the work ethic that not other people are doing and the, the things we're teaching inside. That's where it's going to get exciting. But no, from the standpoint, there's been a lot of improvements and super happy with it, Kendra. Very good, Kendra. All right, let's uh, we got we got these taken care of. Um, all right, Musab. All right. A couple things. Number one. You should have your entire name displayed. Right now, you have it in private mode. Okay. Uh, second thing, and I think this is you. That's pretty cool. I'm, 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 I'm okay with this banner. I'm down with this banner. The photo, I hate. I mean, unless you're an investor or a CEO, the black and white photo, I'm not a fan of. <laughs> and you know, I gotta just, I gotta dead. call it out because I have a black and white photo. Um, yeah, but, but dude, you're in the industry, and it's look. There's a huge difference. Hold on. Yeah. I, well, I was I, just going to say that just from you guys. There's a big difference between that black and white photo and then this black and white photo. Like the, this is like if you have a, a professional black and white photo, it's crisp. It's clear. You got a good smile. This looks good. Masab, I can tell. Look, you're a handsome dude with a beard like mine. Everything. This looks like an obituary. OK, we need to get a better photo that's crisp and clean, better background. Right. Like even the background. Look clean crisp background you can probably do this with canva which you do the background remover and just have like a white background if you do black and white it's got to be crisp and clean that's my only thing with a smile jacob your thoughts 
Yeah, no, same thing. That, so the reason I was saying that is that's what we do as a company because we want to do it where everyone sees our company. They know kind of it, it's all same across the board. But like Omar saying, those are professional headshots that we're doing that we're having people come. Oh, in. yeah. So Yeah, see, like if you look at Jacob's uh, company, let me see. Yeah, yeah see, like they all, they all for the most part have that like very crisp black and white photo. But like, again, it's a big, big difference, okay? Now- uh, next thing I want to critique this Masab. who, who wouldn't, who isn't a results driven salesperson? Like what else is there other than results? Right. What, what else would you be driven by? So like th this, these kind of generic phrases are just, they, they, it's just generic. That's exactly what it is. Right. Um, and so, Put something more specific to you. Uh, like, let me see, dude. You're a di director of strategic growth, right? Like, I would, I would try and find ways to highlight that. You have great experience, man, right? And so, like, I would, I would find a way to tell a story about how, like, you're in the hospitality business, right? So then, That's you're, you're very much focused on customer success, you know? Such a good so, background. Yeah, for such a good background. So the other thing I would say, man, I would be really careful. Like you better like, and this is a sticking point with me when I interview people, you say you're an expert in anything yep. you, you, oh, you better be, you better be able to back that up. And I can guarantee you, I can put, I'll put my like entire year of revenue on it. You're not a lead gen expert. I would, I would, I would definitely get rid of this. Right. And reason, and again, I just want to touch this point because I thought the exact same thing when I saw it, because the reason we're saying that is you're coming into the industry that is considered the, the major leagues of sales, right? So number one, the reason I'm saying that is you're coming into a major league of sales, but number two, what do you think comes with that? A lot of big egos. And so then now when a you're saying, big egos, yeah. right. And so now when you're trying to say that you're an expert and then you're trying to get into the hardest industry and you're not in it, you know what the top thinks <laughs> you're an expert and you can't even be in, you must not be that big of an expert right away from just seeing it. And I'm just telling you from experience, this is not putting you down. It's what do you think I got treated like when I was a medical or when I was a personal trainer? Right? Yeah. And then I'm but, trying to reach out, but he's got it. Look, he's got a great background, man. And no, again, that's what I'm he's saying. Not, that's why I just don't put the expert portion because you are doing it right now. I see that, you know what I mean? But when you start putting that and then people are coming in, here's another thing. If you're such an expert on that, then why would you want to get in this industry? Why don't you just go do something like that and be an expert there and go make money that though I've been in those interviews when I was a personal trainer doing the same thing with, Hey, I, I'm very good at this. I'm in the top 10. Well, why do, would you want to be in medical device sales? Why don't you just go actually start your own gym and go make a hundred grand there, right? They, they're going to flip it on you. So you just have to be aware when you're putting that profile. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and by the way, look, um, something, something I want to show you, I was just double checking. Again, use chat GPT to your advantage, my friends. Um, here we go. Look, I, I went ahead and took uh, Musab's. So what you can do is, uh, you know, so I'm in the same, same area here. So again, I told ChatGPT to be a professional LinkedIn copywriter. I took his LinkedIn, um, uh, profile link here and, and dropped it in. Right. And, and ChatGPT wrote this about section. Now, again, I wouldn't use this, you know, so I told, you know, ChatGPT to make this more formal. You know, the main thing is use ChatGPT to kind of help you get some ideas, right? So for example, Masab, you can take your profile, right? Okay. Go in the industry and try and do some search and find somebody who also has a similar background like you and then copy paste both profiles and say, hey, combine these for Masab, right? So just use chat GPT to your advantage. All right, let's keep going. Walter Krauss is a student at the, at, at the U. All right, Walter. Um, hold on. Oh my! Oh no! Not sorry. The other Miami University. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Miami, Ohio. Because I was like, that's not University of Miami. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Miami University. Okay. Um, if you're gonna use a banner photo, use a crisp, clean one, not a pixelated one. I'm cool with the photo. Again, photo. Um, you're like too low here. You need to have a better smile. It's too dark and everything. Student of Miami doesn't tell me much. It's okay to be a student. Like, tell me a little bit more, right? That's my only. That's my okay, thing. Go down, go down, because you'll be able to see what year is he. He hasn't graduated yet. He's right. he's going to be so a you're senior. Be a junior, yeah. So you're going to be a senior, and that's so. Just so you know, because I've seen people do that, 
instead of doing a student, right? If, especially if you are going into your senior year, what does that show that you're going to be actually looking for? Right. Just so, the reason I'm saying that I have people do this all the time, student at Miami. Now I do do what I exactly just did, but I'll just be transparent when people message me or people like add me, the people I'm usually not responding back to right away, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, because even if I give you information now, you still got two, three years, like you're probably not going to use it. So why waste the time? Right. Exactly. If you are going to be a senior. Okay. Then you can actually throw that up. All right. And then in, in this order, just, just so people, we're going to do Tuyo, Carl, Ian, Keese, Morgan, Deshauna, and then we'll check and see if there's other people. All right. Uh, Tuyo, I'll, I'll take this one, Jacob, because it's pretty yep. easy. So Tuyo, uh, interesting background, biz ops, angel investor folks. So I'm cool with that. You have to have something that's more descriptive as to what you do. Go and unlock your profile settings so you can see your full last name, right? Cool background. Better profile photo, man. Handsome dude, not smiling. Kind of like you're in like a warehouse or something. I want a new profile photo. It needs to be clear, crisp. You need to smile, right? And That's I just want to say I just want to throw out this because when you talk about a competent guy who's accomplished or just a cool background, a cool story, because he's in our course. Absolutely. I want you like the profile picture, just being able to explain that is he has such a cool story, cool background. And I want people to see this and be like, I want to talk to this guy. Yeah, man. But other than that, like everything else looks good. Everything else looks good. All right. Carl Norris. All right. I'm I'm going to roll this one. Yep. Is, is Carl in your course, Jacob? Yep. Yes or no? No. Oh, no. Okay, good. I was going to. I was going to. Okay, so Carl, I'm only doing this because I care about you, man. This is not reflective of you. This is a bad profile. Okay. Number one, there's no banner. Okay. It's like landing on a website. So this looks bad. Um, your photo, you like as a guy, man, you can't have a grin. Like it's a shit, it's a shit grin, right? It's like already it, it turns me off, right? When I'm thinking about talking to you, right? So you have to have a, a, a photo that looks like you're like, you're a cool guy that you're, you're, you know, you're gonna be, you know, interesting to talk to, right? Again, like compare that photo with, uh, let's see, not that one, not that one, not that one. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Look, like that's a good, that's a good smile, man. There's a huge difference between that and this, right? Now, for those who are going to bring up my uh, profile, all right, again, people, people always, always tell me this. They're like, oh, Omar, you don't smile in your photo. You're right, I don't. That's also because I have like 30,000 followers and I'm the CEO of my own company. So I'm not trying to, you know, and, and there's, and the other thing is there's all these videos of me where I'm talking, there's a lot of content. So yeah. I don't need to smile on my photo. Right. But you, you do. So that's one professional person. What? I don't know. Like that's like, that's like maybe the worst headline I've ever seen. It's pretty amazing actually. Uh, <laughs> but Carl, look, man, I say that out of love brother. Let's let me look at your background. Look, let's let's go down here. So you have an interesting background, man. Like, look at this. Yeah. Physical therapy, guest service. You worked at you worked at uh, this at this camp for boys. Now you're a customer development representative. Like, you I know, just that's gotta, a good background, man. I was gonna say I gotta touch on this, Carl. You have an awesome background because like we've helped so many people. But just if you scroll back down real quick, Omar, just so like we can see it when you look physical therapy aid that by itself is big, right? Because you're being able to. A, we know that you're not a physical therapist, but you're working with a lot of different people, but you have that background, that science background. But number two, look at guest service representative. Guess what you got to deal with? A bunch of people. So you should be doing that. The cabin counselor, I love that, man. Like that's a great that you should really be able to put it out there and let people see. And then also just where you're at, knowing that every single, I just had this conversation with our uh, one of our students is everything that you do, you're going to be able to relate it to medical device sales because sales, 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 whatever it is, but there's always the customer relations. There's always those conversations that are coming up. So being able to have that talk, that's what I really want you to be able to show because you have a good background. But like Omar said, when you just go to your actual profile, it doesn't tell the story at all. Yeah, It's just and like, he, he seems nice. Exactly. Quick note, by the way, Tyler Lyon, we'll, we'll, I, I saw you, so we'll bring you up. All right, let's keep rolling through these. Ian Elwood, same thing. Um, no banner, no background. Um, bad photo, man. It's dark, pixelated. Like you're in front of a 
abstract, which is which is okay if it was a good photo. Uh, project management, sales, and customer communication specialists. It's a lot of things, man. Maybe you do all those things, but like it needs to be a lot more focused. Um, man, you worked at Fresenius, like you know, lead with something. So there's just it's just kind of an incomplete profile, right? And so just just these basics of like better photos, some banner, and something here, like will strengthen it. Um, I don't know if there's much to add on that one, Jacob. Uh, I'll just move forward. Okay, Keese. All right, uh, Keese is a biology student. Uh, I like the background. I'm, I'm down with that. Again, my thing with backgrounds is that it needs to communicate something. Like for me, I have a call to action. Keith, if you're, if you're like into science and, and medicine and everything, put something that has to do with that, right? Versus like kind of these cartoons, even though this looks good. And then homie, this, this is not Instagram. The, this needs to change, man. Like it's, it's already bad enough that you're a student. I don't want to say bad enough. Like you're already a student. We already know that you're young and everything. Don't convey that in your photo. Like try and like level up a bit. Right. And yeah, dude, I'll, I'll accept your, your, your connection request, even though you have a terrible photo. <laughs> Jacob. No, it's a, it's guys, he's reached out to me, but yeah, man, it's just, again, don't play into it because again, I just got to ask this question. It's going to be a TikTok that people are going to just freak out because people ask me, well, what, what do you guys think of Gen Z's? What do you think of this new generation? Right. And it just shows us that majority of the time I can just sit here and say that we can say that most of them are lazy and people will get really offended about them. No, oh, that's an old thing to say, but what it means is if you're not going above and beyond, because I don't look at this picture and be like, I want to take you serious. I don't, oh, you want a job that's going to be in 100,000, 200, 300 grand. You want to work with surgeons, the smartest people in the world. And this is how you're portraying yourself to go have a business communication, starting that relationship right away. That doesn't get put out there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Next one, Morgan Baxter. All right. I'm just going to say it. Where did oh, I already got rid of my, um, my presentation? Morgan. This, this photo is like way too close and you got the wrong smile, my friend. Turn, turn, like angle yourself a little bit, have a nice, decent smile and that's it. Never, I'm going to tell this to everybody. I don't care whether you're a man or a woman. Do not smile with your mouth open. It's a terrible idea. It'll never look good. Okay. Um, or at least on LinkedIn, like unless you're a model or something. Okay, Morgan, this get, I don't know what this is. Get rid of all this. This is too much. That's awesome. You work for TB12. That's Tom Brady's company. That's cool. Okay. Um, TB12 body coach. I don't know what that means. Like expand on it, right? seems like you have some good information on your about section. I expand on this as well. Look, dude, you got a great background, man. That's not being communicated here. You're, you're an army vet. Wait, you went to, no, no, sorry. Oh no, he's, yeah, he worked he worked at West Point. That's pretty cool. Masters of Education. Yeah, there's just more you got to expand on here. And then Banner. Uh Jacob? Yeah, no, it's the biggest thing again cuz you have the background that the clinical again when we're trying to get people into medical device sales again, very I was personal trainer. That's it, but like again, what Omar said, it's not telling the story at all. Especially because you guys got to have got to remember most people are going to make a, a decision about you within like the first three seconds, right? So exactly. from just the picture and what they read in the first couple of seconds, like that's what they want to see. So, And Christina, Christina Klein, we're going to be doing you as well after uh, Tyler. Let me see if anybody else is there. Blum, 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 bum, 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 bum. Carl Norris gets you talking. No, bro. It, not in the right way. It does look the the profile does get us talking. Not in the right way. Not in a good way, though. Well, so yeah, let's talk about that real and, quick. And ju okay. Justin, Justin Ariana will do you as well. Okay. Yeah, because people will be like, oh, any press is good press, but not if you're trying to do sales and you're not and you're trying to sell to that person. It's I mean, yeah, look, let me let me let me comment on that. So, like the, it, it is true. Like any like if Donald Trump proved anything, it's like Bad press is good press, but you know what? You're not Donald Trump, my friend. You don't have that kind of leverage, nor do you have that kind of skill set. Yep. Do not do it, right? Yep. Just, just like be smart. It's be all about smart. the like, different levels. Exactly, a hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Okay, let's keep going. 
This is fun, man. Are you having fun, Jacob? What what else would I want to be doing? We're saving day? we're saving lives here, man. We're well, maybe not lives. We're saving careers for sure. All right, so we got that guy. Morgan, we got so Deshauna. All right, Jacob. I've been I've been kind of rolling with it. The one thing yeah. I'll say, I do like the background because it's like, back, oh, it's medical. No, the background right? is a good one, and again, it tells your story, right? Because you're a surgical tech, right? So you are living that life. Again, we already have gone over. I would be taking out the uh, open to work, and again. The aspiring medical device sales specialist, I would actually, me and my uh, point right now would be taking that out because again, it's just going back. I'm, I'm wishing, I'm hoping, say who you are, say what you offer. And then because again, you're going to be going through the process with that. Um, so go through that. But again, your your background is there for the, the clinical part, right? Yeah. It's pharmacy, to... technologist, surgical technologist. Yeah. yeah. Great background. Because we've been able to get a lot of surgical techs hired. And you're doing a great and, job of being able to show that. But yeah, the email. Get rid of that. Get rid just, of it. And it's scraped. Like Omar said, because people can just use it for other, uh, use it for actual like email marketing, whatever it is. But also there's a lot of creeps out there. You should. Not yeah. And personally, Jacob, I, again, Jacob, this is your, your area that, you know, know best me personally. I, I don't, if you're currently pursuing a bachelor's or any degree, I don't talk about that. Because it, 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 I think it hurts you more than helps you. In my it, it can take it away because then they would be like, well, it seems like you're focused on this. How can you do this? Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then also just so you guys know, because this is a common question. If you don't have a bachelor's, you're most likely not going to get hired right away at a Medtronic J&J striker, right? Zimmer, all, all these people will get mad about it. But it's the reality is they have hundreds of thousands of people applying to them. They have by HR, even if the manager wants to hire you, we've gone through this. Even if the manager wants to hire you, if you don't have the four-year degree that the HR says you have to have, you're not going to get it. So yep. that's just something to be out there. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Ty, do we got Tyler line? Chris, so Tyler's Klein. my boy. You talk about a hard worker from Tennessee. Well, uh, skirts of Kentucky as well. He go, gets after it. Um, yeah. I'll, uh, you know, I'm cool with all of it. Even, even the uh, photo, but you know what? I'm, again, my thing, you know, you keep the, keep the RN. Yeah. I'm okay with that. This other stuff, you got to get rid of that. That's, that's just my thing. Great headline though. And and by the way, let me tell you why this is a great headline. You know, focus on patience and everything. I, I like that. But on but once I click in loving husband, father, great golf enthusiast, love it. Love the use of the emojis. Man of God. I'm down with that. Look, some people are like, oh, you know, you shouldn't, you know, bring in religion and everything. But you know what? If you're if if you're if you're Christian and you're proud of it, I think you should uh, uh, be very open about that. I have no problem with that. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. And anybody who says otherwise, I don't know. Well, this they're is prob what, probably like a radical woke. Yeah, well, this is something. what I can just say, because me and Tyler, we go on this all the time. We talk about our relationship with Christ and all that stuff. But it's also I just don't like uh, we're at a point. I'm going to put that out there because that's who that's me. That That is me. I'm not changing for anybody. And if you don't like me and that's why you don't want to hire me. Great. I didn't want to work for you anyway. And some people yeah. are going to feel different ways, but that's how I feel. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, um, I don't want to bring attention to this, but I just, I just feel like I have to say, it because there's some, it's going to be a dude, probably there's, there's going to be a guy who sees this on my profile and is like, Oh, I can do that. It's a bad idea. There's a reason why I do these things. Again, I, I run my, I'm an entrepreneur. I have my own company. I don't, Rep I don't rely on a anybody. W2. What's that? You don't rely on a W2 or someone else paying. No. Your so there, and even, even me doing this, this puts, this is a risk for my business, but I'm okay. I I'm, I'm, perfectly fine losing business because of this um for uh let me see let me go to my let me go to the news feed uh oh there i am i love when i pop up on my own feed on another <laughs> channel um let, oh let me see does it come up on here i'm just gonna say uh i'm gonna say great i watched this video early so okay Here's the thing, my friends. While I did play around as a joke with the pronouns here, and I put my pronouns as we, we, them boys. <laughs> Just you listen should, to that song this morning. Yeah, you should not play around with this. I mean, if, you're if, if your thing is like you have to have your pronouns in there, that's fine. Go for it. I don't personally recommend it. But the other reason why is like when you comment on things, that is exactly what's going to come up next to your name. So um, 
so yeah, just don't mess around with that. That's, That's just my, point. yeah. Um, other than that, good looking profile, man. I yeah. like it. So, and I just want like to give a shout out to Tyler real quick. He has gotten a major offer. Um, nice. Road, but unfortunately there was politics and some just things we won't talk about. Hey. That moved it on, but he he's doing all the right things. Already got a couple other opportunities, but already got the oh. offer. So. There we go. Hey, Tyler, always remember this is being sacrificed for something greater, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you get to pick the story that you believe and choose. And that's the story you should tell yourself. All right. Yeah. Moving forward. Let's do, uh, let's do, here we go. We got Justin. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I jumped. Christina Klein. All right. Christina, Klein. what is, uh, I think this is like a, uh, one of the, uh, backgrounds that LinkedIn gives you. So good background, but look, you can go to Google and find a better background, right? Love the photo. I like I like the blaze. I like the use of colorful um, yep. either backgrounds or 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 um, clothing because when I'm scrolling, like immediately I'll know this Christina Klein um, headline. Need got to work on that. That tells me nothing, right? And it, and um, also I got to touch on in what when you say West Coast sales executive, the first thing that came to mind is that's great if you want to stay there. But I, A, I don't know anything about it. But like, again, if you're open to going to other places, you're going to pigeonhole yourself just by putting that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Strong sales leader with expertise. And see, like, here, here's the thing. My, okay, again, remove the email. I'm telling you. Um, the other thing I was going to say, guys and gals, is this. If I read this and I can't tell who it is, it's not a good about section. This could be anybody right? This could be anybody. So you need to change this about say, look, you know, Christina, you went to school in Russia for God's sake. You, you have some kind of a story. Cool Tell background. that story, both personal and professional, right? Um, yeah. So you worked in the luxury goods industry. Okay, cool. Like, see, like expand on these things. The other thing is proficient in Microsoft office, word spreadsheets, PowerPoint. Listen, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me use my, my, my wife as an example. My wife um, you know, she worked in the airline industry. And so for many years, like she never ne had a need to learn how to use Excel word spreadsheet. She just, she now learned, learned like the past year or two for her new job. She works, she works for YouTube now how to do those things. And she's very proud of it. I'm personally very proud of her because I forgot like how much it takes to learn how to use these tools. That all being said, these things will definitely not be things that get you hired. If it's something that a lot of people do, I would not, I would not have it in there. Uh, Jacob. Yeah, no, the reason I, to your point is I don't put that any anymore because even my nephew can figure that out. He's six. Yeah. And I, I, that's me I giving crap. Like, no, can he really do that? No. But like, I'm just saying that if you've been in high school and college and you don't know how to do office, Excel, Word, all that stuff, you were sleeping. You don't know. So again, that's just saying, hey, yeah, I and did, but everyone else. Yeah. And look again, like for, 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 for people, especially people who like uh, come to the U S and stuff, I don't know if that's Christina's story. Like, you know, again, it, it's, it's hard, like learning these new tools. And when I sat down and I, either with my wife or the people, when I have to teach, like when I have to train an employee on certain things, I'm like, yeah, I forgot. Like, you know, it's not easy. It's kind of confusing. That all being said, it's not going to get you hired. I would get it up, get it out. Focus on telling a compelling story for yourself. Okay. Yep. Um, Justin Ariana. All right. Just got into Justin. the course yesterday. The, oh, he's in Monday. your course? He just got in on Monday. Okay. So I was going to say like good, good photo, good smile. I, I, I like smiles with teeth, but you know what? It's a good, it, it's a good photo. It's very clean. I love the background, man. This is a good background, right? That's cool. Addicted to making a positive impact on others. That's pretty good. I like that. Um, you don't need to put FL because it already says you're in, in Florida. So expand more on this, but already everything looks good. And take the BS and kinesiology out. It, look, I already love. Okay, get rid of the uh, the email, by the way. Um, and and I don't know, Jacob. Maybe I'm being hard on it. Should they have their email in their about section, or do you do you recommend no. they? Do? So I don't because again, the thing is, is number one going back is how many people, Omar? If you put an email, well, it's different. You do lead generation, all that stuff, but like. How many TMs are going to be looking at this person? Like, I'm going to email them. No, I can tell you from, you know, all reps do. You're coming to me. Give me your stuff. I shouldn't have to do any work. Right. And again, 
unless you're and they like can, an actual they can message person. you directly on LinkedIn too. If they if yeah. they really want to get in talk to you, they'll just message you directly. I, do, I don't do the email stuff because again, I, I've just lived this world too much. Just you have, there's a lot of creeps out there and, and there's a lot and, of things that people can do with stuff with. So don't even put it out there. Exactly. I, I already love, you know, and I haven't read the whole thing, but I, I love this uh, about section because it, it tells me, you know, it tells me a story. Right. And again, you know, this first sentence, you know, it's a strong one. I think it's positive. I think it's good, right? And I think there's ways that you can, when you work with Jacob, to to strengthen it. But like overall, yep. I, I'm, I'm, I'm about this. And again, when I read this, right, I'm seeing potential. I'm like, yeah, you know what? This guy's got a good attitude. Former athlete, you know, like this guy, you know, he could be somebody for me, right? So I think, I think that, I think that looks good. Um, that was the last one. Let's see, let's see what other what other questions we got. Yeah, what what Q and A's do we got? Here we go. All right, let me. Uh, let's see. Uh, same here. All right, so let's see what other questions we got. So let me let me put up the ask your question. Okay. Um. Which, if they're still hanging on right now, committed people right now. I love yes, it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, Ian says making a joke of uh, the pronouns is giving people a reason not to like you. He's absolutely right about that. He's absolutely right. I'm not going to lie. When I put it up, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to give people a reason to not to be pretty upset with me. About the what? About the pronoun thing. But, but people are going to be offended about everything. Yeah. But personally, personally, um, every now and then I do things th with my content and myself to get people to unfollow me and block me because yeah. I just, I don't want, I don't want, I but don't want people you, you, yeah. want to be, you want to be a part of, but like, I'm just going to say this out here. Cause we talk about this all the time. Yeah. Welcome to the world. There's always going to be people who don't like you and you're always going to offend somebody. So you just have to understand who those people are. Oh, here we got some questions here. Um, so Lauren Barry says if she's 10 years out of college, but was a college athlete, do you still put that in there? Yeah. Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause it showed absolutely. what you had to do. Your dedication. Um, Ian also, Ian asks, uh, can you talk about the potential path into medical sales for some without a BS? Uh, Jacob, that's all you, man. Yeah, so that's easy. Actually, a great one could be where you actually have a podcast coming out tomorrow. Uh, goes over distributorships. But if you don't have a bachelor's, you're going to go probably the distributor route, um, most likely, or like a smaller company. But again, I always am going to push a distributor. If you don't know what a distributor is in medical device sales, listen to tomorrow's podcast because you guys, everyone has questions. But again, the thing is, all these big companies need a four-year degree. It's what they require. Literally, they put it in and try to get through. Charge says, no, it doesn't work. So if you're not having a bachelor's, you're going to have to be networking. And you're going to be going to a distributorship, which again is somebody who owns their own medical device company, sells their own products and kind of hire you. And it doesn't matter what degree you have. They can hire you because it's their company. Exactly. Hey, we got more people on YouTube watching. So Jonathan Schloss says hi. What's hey. up, Jonathan? All right. Uh, Carl Norris has a good one. So top three attributes you and hiring managers are looking for a new rep. Um, I'll, I'll go, I'll go first. So for me, top three attributes, and th this is actually in my own company too. The experience and what you're doing is fine. I'll use, actually, I'm going to use my, uh, my creative director as an example. My creative director was fresh out of college. Like he had no experience. I found him when I was using an agency and they, uh, recommended him as a creator for me. Um, I, he doesn't work for me. He, he started his a business as a result of me being his first customer. And so he, he's actually my number one expense right now. Like of all my business expenses every month, he's my number one expense. And I'm very happy about that. So yeah. His name's Raheem. You guys should check him out. So the three reasons why I hired this guy, it's the same reasons what I look for when I'm hiring a sales rep or anything else. Number one is attitude, yeah. right? Super positive guy. And you can feel it through their energy and everything. Um, number two, coachability, right? The guy like doesn't have this ego. We all have egos, right? And that's okay. But the guy did not have, have an ego. And, and he proved that to me early on because like I tested him where I was like, Hey, I need to give you some feedback on something. I'm going to, I'm, and this is going to hurt. Right. And so I laid into him and I was like, the, the, I have an issue with these things and these things need to get fixed. And his response was like, Hey, Thank you so much for the feedback, Omar. You are absolutely right. I'm going to get better. And then took action on it, right? Yep. You know, and then the third thing is like, um, 
it's kind of like uh, industrious, industrialness, 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 industri industrious. Oh my God. I can, that's going to drive me nuts. Industriousness. Oh my God. Why can't I remember um, the name? Uh, in, industry, industriousness. Why can't I pronounce? I'm, I'm tired. What I mean by industriousness is if, if you have a problem or an obstacle, are you, are you creative and, and innovative in terms of like figuring out like, Hey, you know what? We, we can approach it from this way or that way or something, right? Nobody wants to hire somebody who's going to come to you with problems with no solutions. You want to know that like, Hey, I'm going to take this and hand this to this person. And when that person has it, like, I don't have to worry about it. It's yep. going to get done. They're going to figure something out. Right. Yep. And, and they're going to, they're going to go, they're going to exhaust every pathway before they come and bother me. Yeah. Right. You know, yep. so th those are the things, again, these are all, these aren't skills. These are attributes that you can pick up. Uh, Jacob, yep. what do you, what do you look for? Yeah. The three things that I've seen with our people who get hired the fastest. And also what I've just seen in success with me and myself and other reps is number one, communication skills. Can you even just have a conversation? Can I get on a call with you? And what Omar was saying is the energy that you're giving off right? That's what people really liked when we would get on a call. Whatever I'm talking about, I'm passionate about. You can hear the energy in my voice, right? So number one is just communication. Number two, self-starter. This is the biggest one. In medical device sales, people don't want to hold your hand. This is why I get so passionate about you have to network. You have to cold call. You have to get on phone calls with people because what does that show you that you're doing? You're actually putting in the work and that they're not going to have to be able to, hey, Carl, you need to go do this. Hey, Carl, are you, did you do that? So there's that part. And then number three is exactly one of yours. What you said is coachability because getting to know their background. Again, I say this all the time. We can, I can teach anybody anything at this point of just, Hey, what do you do? But are you open to it? Because there's so much that people are like, Oh, I already know how to do this or, Oh, I've done this before. And that's what kills them. That's what makes them not be able to progress to that next level. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And again, think of it like this. And, and this is going to be, uh, you know, a lot of people are, th they, they feel like, and this is not just to get into medical skills. This is even in the industry, which is like, you know, if I just have one more special stamp on my passport, like that's the one thing that'll get me. And I think this is one of the reasons why, right. Sorry. I, I I'm just going to say it. Um, I have, I have nothing against medical sales college, right. That being said, I think a lot of people feel like, hey, if I spend this $20,000 and get this special stamp from medical sales college, that's going to be my foot into the industry. If you compare that to like, let's say Jacob's program, which again, they're different things. Jacob doesn't give you a cert certification. There's no thing that special stamp you put on LinkedIn that like, say, you know, med tech companies can be like, oh, let's hire this person. What you end up learning are the skill sets, the disciplines, the habits of how you're going to position yourself. So that somebody looks at you and says, wow, we, I, I would love to hire this person because, you know, you've, you've found a way to position your experience really well. Or if you have no experience, they can look at you and say, I could see who this person can be for me a year from now. Right. Okay. Jacob, uh, please jump in. Well, the only thing I'm just going to say is I say this to our people in our course all the time. Screw your experience. Screw your background. Who, like, for example, let's just say about Omar, who are they getting when they get Omar Khatib? What, yeah, what are exactly. They getting? And that's what we're teaching. And this is what I just say is this is all a game. And what most people don't know is they don't know how to play the game. I've been very fortunate. We've gotten over a thousand people hired in the last two and a half years with and without sales experience, with no degrees, all the above. We just got a 23 year old mechanical engineer degree. Who's a nanny just hired at Arthrex, right? Like we've been able to do it all. But the thing is, is can you tell your story? Can you learn how to play the game? And we just hadn't learned how to master the game. And now we're just teaching you how to play the game because we're also new how to play the game is exactly what you have to do once you're in the industry to play the game. And this is what I always tell people. You think I'm full of crap? That's fine. You don't have to listen to me. I just have to look like me and Omar were talking about. There's some people who were saying some things about me. I don't know them, never met them. But guess what? They're saying that I've never performed. All I have to say is scoreboard, right? Go to my LinkedIn. You can see my performance. I, I, you can just, because I, I say this all the time. If I'm full of crap, when you get on all the social medias, they would just rip at me. I want to have all the five-star reviews. I want to have all the messages telling me that we've actually done what we've done. And also, if I have never had these results inside the industry, which I think I'm teaching you guys, I want to be a manager in under three years where most right. people take that. And it's just what I can tell you guys. Real, uh, exactly. Jacob, so uh, this is a kind of equivalent, like, does a four-year degree is a must in medical? No, it's degree. not. 
Yeah. Uh, a uh, Arian Co Coffee says, uh, if you're an on-site specialist, how would you go about breaking into sales? I mean, like, um, if if I if I was a janitor, how would I go about breaking into sales? Like, it's it's all the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Aaron, he's reached out to me. We've talked, but like the, the honest truth is like, we've had the conversation. You got to learn how to play the game. You don't know how to play the game. And then everybody goes, and this is just a quick, rant. I have a whole podcast. Everyone goes to the onsite specialist role. They tell you, oh, you're going to go be an ASR in the next year. I know pl plenty of onsite specialists who've been there two, year two years. They still haven't moved them up again. And guess what happens? Unfortunately, that background usually doesn't help you that much. Yeah. Right? And, and by the way, the something I was going to, I was going to mention is like, uh, in terms of playing the game, this is also the same when it comes to, let's say, getting promoted. And I learned this earlier yeah, on to, to like a manager level, director level, VP. It has very little to do with how hard you're working, right? And even to, to some, some extent, the results you produce. Just because you produce results doesn't mean someone magically says, we should, we should promote this person. Like, it's well, all... You know this. Huh. I, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but I, I just yeah. need to say this. You know this more than anybody because we see it. And we ha I've had this conversation with my buddies that are in sales. Most of my buddies that are in sales, they've had people who are underperformed them. They haven't had the results get management positions over them, and they never performed as reps. When you learn about the promotion game and you learn about that stuff, a lot of that th time, it doesn't even have to go with results. No, that's so exactly right, man. That game. That's yeah, that's exactly right. So with that, with that kind of being said. Um, Something, yeah. So something actually I want to I want to promote for a second is like next week, uh, I'm doing a book book club. Uh, we're re we're finishing up uh, this book, the Sales Acceleration Formula. You can go out and get it. Right, you don't have to finish the whole book. Just go ahead and join. Um, but if you go to my LinkedIn profile and check my post, you'll see a post for it. There's a Zoom link, so just click that and register. And here's a point that I want to make. From now, all of you need to become learning machines. The best salespeople, in my opinion, do continuing education. They do coaching. Look, Jacob already went through my program. He's also uh, uh, a coaching client. So like he on a monthly basis, he pays and I, I coach him, right? Yep. And so this all goes to say that you should continue education never ends. For me, as much as I've done, you know, as much as I know, there's a lot, there's a lot that I don't know. I still pay for courses. I there's a mastermind group that I'm part of that I pay monthly for, right? So get in the habit of investing in your own personal development. I heard this a long time ago, and I thought it was crazy, which was every year you should invest about five to ten percent of your income on like self-development, like courses, conferences, yeah. everything. I was like, that's a lot of money. And I realized like, no, it's uh, in some ways it's not enough. like every, like I'm trying to actually increase that budget this year. Yeah, because you know? the ROI, because you've seen it and you've got, been able to see it. The ROI is insane. <laughs> totally. Uh, Lauren Barry says, can I put learning machine in your profile? Yeah, actually, I think you should. <laughs> you, you, there's nothing wrong with it. Because like, here, here's the thing. Like, I think I put, um, not learning machine, like avid, like I put like avid reader or voracious reader. I put voracious leader a long time ago. And 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 I put that because when I, when I go to an interview, People bring it up because they're like, they, it's like a gotcha question. It's like, oh, you put a voracious reader in your profile and your resume. Like, why? And and that was a great, great opportunity for me to pitch. I'm like, yeah, I was like, look, on average, I mean, you know, it's more now. But I used to say back then, I was like, look, on average, I read about three to five books a week. And I do that because I read very broadly to take ideas from other industries and bring them into my territory, into my business plan to get better. And, and that by itself brings up all kinds of questions. Like, wait, you read three to five. How do you read three to five books a week? Then I can explain that. Or what kind of books you're reading. The moment that you're able to do this and become interesting to the person interviewing you, yep. now they're asking questions just about you versus yep. random questions like, oh, if you, um, you're given this random situation, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yep, exactly. we, got a, we got a bunch of questions just came in, by the way. Let's see. Uh, Arian coffee, have a chance to shadow a surgeon being new to this. What would you recommend going into this to take advantage of this opportunity? Go in there and shut up. That's Bam. my recommendation. Yeah, fly on the wall. Don't and say anything. Just don't say, yeah, just go in, stay out of the way. <laughs> take a no I would just say this, take a notebook and a pen, take notes and have questions to ask later, but you don't say a word in there. Unless yeah. spoken to. Yeah. yeah. And actually here's a, t here's another thing, Ar uh, Arian, uh, going into the procedure, 
look the surgeon up and read their last few papers that they published, read them. Okay. If they don't have any papers published, find out what, what procedure you're going to watch, go read up on that procedure. So when you're in there, right, the surgeon is probably going to ask like, Oh, you know, what do you think? You know, are you enjoying yourself? They're going to ask you something and you can take that opportunity to ask a question that's going to impress them. Right. Yep. Um, Nicholas Morales says, how do you feel about pharmaceutical sales experience to segue into so medical we, I have whole podcasts. Go listen to that. Let me just tell you, med device hates pharma. So if you think pharma is a good standpoint, you literally will have a harder time to get into pharma because pharma is not considered sales. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't mean it's, it can happen, but you're going to, you're going to have to overcome a lot. Like you so, got to really prove. So no, we've gotten people hired. So just go back. Jen Little, we just did it three weeks ago. Go to my podcast with Jen Little. She got in from a uh, pharma and she got in with Smith and nephew, but I can tell you the sales experience and the interview experience is much harder because people will not take you serious. They will cut you out. And we've had people go to the final rounds. The VP walks in. They're like, where's this person from? Pharma? No, the interview is over. We're not even doing it. They're out. They won't even look at them. So it, again, even though people are like, oh, it's sales in the med device world. Again, this isn't just me saying it. Like, I don't care what you guys do. It's That's the stigma behind it in medical device sales. And if you're trying to learn more, I have several podcasts going over this. Yeah. And like, look here, here's, here's, here's the biggest thing is like when it comes like stigma is going to exist, no matter what people are going to have biases. So in order to overcome that, and look, I'm just going to say it. Um, being a pharmaceutical sales rep is essentially being a glorified caterer because you, you're not covering case and nothing. So the only way you can educate about the drug is like holding lunch and learns being in pharma is hard, by the way, there's a lot of good skills you pick up thousand percent now to, to overcome that. You have to find ways to to repackage yourself on LinkedIn and in the interview where they're talking to you and they're like, they, like they don't even think that you're a pharma rep, right? Yeah. That's we, that's the thing. When we when we it, went with Ben, you don't even bring up the pharma experience. They're gonna see yeah it, talk about it a little bit, but it's you're doing a whole different. I mean, well. y yeah, it's fine because like you you inter you you interact with physicians and stuff, which is fine. But like again, like you need to do a good job studying and preparing yourself so that when, when they talk to you, you're like, man, this person knows their stuff. Like, I'll give you a great example. One of the guys who I mentor, um, and we mentor each other at this point, I won't mention his name, but let's just say that he is 20, what is he? 25 years old. And he's the VP now vice president of a really reputable life science company. Okay. And, and he's been in the industry for literally three years. He's a drop in the bucket. That's a yeah. rare talent. Okay. I forget yeah that he's been in the industry for barely three years because when I talk to him, the depth of knowledge he has, I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. That's what you have to work towards. And by the way, that does not happen by accident. If you want to overcome and accelerate this, this, the experience gap, you got to do a lot of reading. You got to do a lot of studying, reaching out, speaking to people when you're in the car, what kind of podcast you listen to like shameless plug the state of MedTech, I have over 50 episodes with like, venture capital investors, this former CEO of Medtronic, listen to those episodes. How do these people talk? Just play pretend and mimic that, right? That's a good starting point, right? Um, Carl Norris, our numbers are a big factor of determining success. Like, yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Um, uh, med devices of, is a world is a big club. It's who, you know, I made it to final interviews multiple times without off. For, I don't know. If that's a question or a statement. Well, with, well, real quick, if you've made the final interviews without offers, that means you lost the interview and that's not good. Yeah. But, but real quick the, to the point so people say this all the time and I, and I used to say it back in the day, right? It's not what you know, it's who, you know, and that is the point to get your foot at the door, right. Or get a, get a seat at the table, but I can get my dog a seat at the table. Now I say this all the time. I can get my dog <laughs> an interview. That's not hard. What, like I say this all the time to everyone who's listening, because you guys will all be like, yeah, I'll, I'll crush it. But we know the actual results. I can get you guys final interviews today. What are you going to do with it? That's yeah, that's a problem, good point. Right. So it's, it's not, yes, it's who, you know, but that's only getting you a seat at the table. You didn't do all the other work that we're teaching inside our people to no market share, no competitors, no doctors, no competitive surgeons, no the uh, market cap, no where we're going to be right there. All the different stuff that's going in. And that's where people lose out. And so I can just say this all the time. If you're getting to the final interviews and you're losing out, that's exciting. You should be jacked, but also it's, you're doing several things wrong and that's why you're not getting picked. Um, exactly. And I can say that if you've been in for more than three or four months, you're trying, 
and you haven't gotten hired, like, let's say this. If you've been trying to break in for more than four to six months, I can guarantee you it's not the process's fault. You are doing wrong stuff because our average person breaks in in under 10 weeks. Yeah. Quick, uh, real quick, Jacob, we got a couple of shout outs. So Jonathan Schloss says, Omar, thanks for the LinkedIn upgrade. Phenomenal uh, social selling index score achieved. Appreciate your assistance and Jacob's amazing networking advice. Both awesome. Hashtag flowers deserved. And then, oh, look at that. Valerie Padawar says, no idea how I'm putting food on the table, but this podcast has convinced me to take the course. Such a great and helpful info. Hey, Valerie, look, let me, let me tell you, like in terms of like getting into Jacob's course, here's my, here's my suggestion. When I, when I was laid off my job, like many, many years ago, it was my first job. I was laid off. I had a mortgage to pay and everything. And at that time, what felt like a lot of money was like, I'm going to enroll in this one course with Seth Godin's alt MBA course. It was a $4,000 course. I did not have that money. Best money I spent because sometimes it's not just the education and knowledge you're receiving, just the energy to be around the right people, to have the right coach. And a lot of times, even in business, I realize this. I mean, look, there is a, a mastermind uh, that I that I'm a part of. I pay fifteen hundred dollars a month for this mastermind. Like we get on a Saturday call and everything. A lot of times, I'm not learning anything new. So people ask, like, why are you paying fifteen hundred dollars a month to continue? Part of it's just like the energy of being around people like that transfers to me and puts me in a positive state, so that I go and achieve and do really well. Like that, and it's a huge it makes a huge difference, you know. Um, Christina Klein, does your profile need to indicate that you are looking to get into medical sales? I'm currently employed in another industry and can't indicate looking into getting in the med field. Oh, great question, Jacob. Yeah, awesome crust question. But that's most of our people, right? The mo most of my people in my course are working other industries and other jobs. No, that's where what we're teaching you is how to go put in the work, how to do it, and then how to get those offers. And no, you don't have to go and shout from the rooftops you're trying to get into medical device sales. Exactly. And Valerie says, she's like, I feel like I have a good story, just not relaying it in the best way. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Look, Tell Valerie, your story. Yeah, they're, look, there are companies that, you know, pay me a lot of money because like they have a great product story, but it's like, you know, how do you tell it? Look, the ability to position and tell a persuasive and effective story to get somebody to make a decision is not easy. Otherwise, I mean, if it was easy, like, the entire marketing industry wouldn't exist. So there's, you know, I think the first step to, to recognize is say, Hey, you know what? I need help. And even if you, you can be smart, hardworking, all these things, but that does not mean that you're going to know what to do. And I think the biggest thing is like, you know, Valerie, you can figure out how to do this on your own. The question is how long is that going to take? Is it going to take a month? Is it going to take a year. Like you have no idea. And again, this is why my bias is always like, if there's a big problem that I need to solve, either I'm paying somebody to do it for me, I'm taking a course or I'm hiring a coach because those things are going to be the only things that accelerate my time. I can get money, like money I can get. I can always make back money. I'm, I'm not going to get my time back. And so I don't take risks anymore when it comes to my time. It's like, I don't know how long that's going to take for me to figure out like, you know? Yep. So thousand percent. Valerie, feel free to reach out again if you guys are interested for applying because we again we don't just take anybody. Um, but if you go to the link in my description courses, you can go and apply there. Um, and we get on a call and go through. A little yeah, and then look, Valerie is a sweetheart. So like, like, look, she said, uh, getting new headshot suggestions on what to wear post smiles. Um, go back and rewatch uh, this episode because I did cover like what to do and smile. But in terms of what you wear, go look at uh, like Christina actually has a great profile photo, yeah. Christina Klein. But go look at other people in the industry and think of it like this. This is what I did was like I went and looked at VPs and CEOs. I'm like, what yep. do they wear and how do they look? Hear them. Yep. And and model that. And then and and then the smile look as a woman, you can smile very big with teeth. It's gonna look fine. If you're a guy, it's it's there's a there's a line you can cross and look like creepy and untrustworthy. But as a woman, you're gonna be okay. I can just tell like from your photo that you have a great smile. So like have a nice big smile. And I would say take multiple photos. Um, take multiple photos with different smiles, multiple photos from different sides. I always recommend the left side of the face showing because that's the most persuasive side of the face. It shows more emotion. And take a few different blazers, right? I would say white shirt and take a few different blazers, like a black blazer, a colored one, and just see which one you like. And just if you're going to go take headshots, take a bunch and then sit down and figure out which one's best, you know? Perfect. 
Jacob, we went like way over time. So, but hey. I want, yeah, look, I want to thank everybody uh, for this. Um, Jacob, any, any final thoughts? No, I just want to say, you know, you guys, I love that you guys are all hustling to get into this industry that you're wanting to, it's a great industry. Uh, I say it all the time. It's an industry that changed my life for the fact of getting to help people being able to make an impact in others, but also financially changed my life as well. It's let me live a different lifestyle and it's a great industry. But again, it's normally the information is not the problem. It's the execution and being able to go in and just what Omar said. Um, again, that's why I put out all the free stuff, you know, the podcast, the YouTubes, and just like Omar does, we put it out there. We're not here to say, hey, come take our stuff because we don't need it. Like, right, I have my own job. We do other things. But the reason I'm saying that is all we do is save you a lot of time and a lot of money because I can sit here and tell you, I just had a conversation. Scrub Tech who has been trying to break in for 13 months. They still haven't got in and the job they were interviewing for was 75 grand, right? Our average person breaks into 9.8 weeks at $91,000. So if you just do the math, right? We just say, we, they would have saved nine months of their life, actually made more money. And now they would have nine months experience in the industry, 10 months experience, making more money. And then now they could progress their career. That's all we do. So again, if that's something, if you guys are really serious and you want to break in, feel free to reach out. But again, I don't want you to ever be like, oh, all he wants is us to join his course and do that. If that's how you feel, please don't ever join my course because we probably won't accept you in the course anyway. And, and just go listen to all the free stuff. Yeah. I, yeah and I was going to say just a quick, quick plug, you know, go to Jacob's website. So it's new to medical device sales.com for more info. Check out the, his podcast. Also check out my podcast, State of MedTech. If you want to, you guys want to do us a favor, like here, dude, if you don't want to sell, I'll sell. Okay. If you want to do us a favor, Go, if you appreciated what we did here, pick up your phone, go to new to medical device sales podcast on Spotify and Apple, give it five stars. And then on Apple, write a review. The, writing the review is the most important part. Then go to state of med tech. Give me five stars on Spotify. Give me five stars and write a review on Apple, right? That, that would be like the most helpful thing that you can do. It, it would really, that we would appreciate both it. really appreciate. It. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you both have the best, like technically, yeah, you know, Jacob, I was gonna say, for me, it's in med tech. For you, it's like medical device sales. We technically have the two of the top podcasts in the industry. So, like, we'll just continue to crush, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just um, of, but this is what it comes down to. You want to know why? Because I, I get this all the time. People will be like, how do you guys do it? And it's because all we do is try to provide value. That's all. We yeah, do. that's exactly. We, we do a lot. We give a lot for free, man. Yeah. Like, Jacob, how, how many, how, like, okay, not now, though, because you get, you're at a different point in your business and everything. But at the beginning, how many times did you get on the phone with somebody to spend time talking to them, coaching them for free? Like oh. Oh. all the time. Yeah. Same. Hundreds of, that, hundreds of thousands of hours. That's why I can sit here yeah. and tell you, because people ask me, why should I even listen to you after two and a half years of in the industry? You're not even three. Over the last three years, I've been on over 10,000 phone calls. I've talked to CEOs. I've put in the time. I've, you know, I've helped. That's what people forget all the time because they'll see the course. They don't understand the course has been up for a year. Like for two years prior to that, I coached people for free. I got on phone calls. I put up podcasts. I did all this stuff for free because I just wanted to help people. And then eventually, as everybody knows, there's only so many time, so much time in the day. And as things have, we have the number one podcast in the space. So as you guys are watching this, there's a lot of other people watching it, reaching out. We only have so much time to be able to help so many people and people who want to even help themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Well, with that all being said, Thank you all for joining. Really yeah, appreciate you. it. Looking forward to engaging with you guys more on LinkedIn. And of course, on Instagram, you go check out new to medical device sales on Instagram. For me, my Instagram, you can find me my personal uh, Omar M. Khatib. That's like more self-development stuff. But if you're into just medical sales stuff and memes, go check out all hail medical sales. You'll find it. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care, yeah, everybody. Right. See ya.